Abandoned and alone, we set sail on a voyage of discovery and danger. It's just cracking the wood is just cracking. and this is Most Haunted. This is a first in our eight series of paranormal investigations, a location like no other, surrounded not only by hazardous waters, but also by a growing reputation as being haunted. So wish us well as we head out across the Solent and into the seriously spooky Spitbank Fort. Spitbank is the smallest of the four 19th century forts that were designed to defend Portsmouth Harbour from French invaders. Its intricate construction was completed in 1877, 16 long years after it began. Thankfully though, it never was a witness to armed conflict, as Britain's most famous naval city stood firm from any imminent maritime invasion. Over 150 men were once based here, but by 1956 it closed, as a naval threat ceased to exist. Nowadays, visitors can make the one-mile cruise past the waterfront city's 21st century construction to see this remarkable building for themselves. One common occurrence that happens in the kitchen and dining room area is the sound of breathing when there's no one here. It's also thought that a poltergeist lurks in this area and it likes to show itself by moving bottles, smashing plates and throwing chairs across the floor. Yeah, I've had several paranormal experiences. Uh, the first one was uh, one Christmas we had people on board and we have a shelf unit where we keep the um, pudding dishes. Uh, it only holds sort of five at a time and some of these dishes were actually taken out of the shelf and thrown with force to the floor where they were shattered. Also had name calling where you think somebody's called your name and you know there's nobody about. Occasionally hear whistling. And um, a few months back I had a noise in my ear downstairs in the lower basement. It's said there's supposed to be a negative energy down here in the basement. Many people hear hissing noises, and I have already experienced that. Others have felt hands on their shoulders. I'm certainly not looking forward to coming down here later on this evening. As far as I know, there's only been one recorded death here at the fort. A fellow called Henry, who was a sergeant, who was up on top of the castle when they were testing guns. These were breech-loading guns, which you put the shells in from, from the back, and unfortunately, the back of the gun came open. The shell came out and exploded and blew him to pieces. And there are many eyewitness accounts of him moving things, touching people on the shoulder, and making a strange hissing noise in people's ears. Believe it or not, this used to be a bedroom and many people feel very uncomfortable in here. Some people have witnessed the dark shape of a man standing by one of the walls mumbling incoherently and a shadow has been seen walking through the room. This is a scary place in the daytime. I shudder to think what it's going to be like in the dark. Parapsychologist Matthew Smith is often loath to buy into any hint of paranormal psychology, but even he has to own up to the amazement we were all sharing at this particular location. This has to be one of the strangest places we've ever investigated. This is probably the most bizarre place I've ever been. Um, I mean, even now you're hearing the wind swirling around. It's going to be really weird in, later on when we're trying to locate sounds, if that's one thing people experience. But it is, it's just so, so strange. We're a mile off the coast. Um, it's, gonna, it, it's just such a cold and damp place. 
you know, and I, you know I'm, I'm quite skeptical. I, I don't typically kind of get too spooked out about these places, but this place is just such a weird place. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to tonight. It's going to be a challenge investigating this place, though. I mean, I've already had something happen to me in the basement. We were doing a piece to camera, and just before the cameras were rolling, I heard a hissing noise, and then there was a huge bang, and I ran. I, was, I didn't know where it was coming from. I checked it with one of the eyewitnesses, Pauline, and she said she was working, uh, sweeping down there a month ago, and she heard exactly the same thing. So what do you make of that? Well, it's fascinating that you've had the experience in the same place where somebody else had that experience. That's obviously one place we're going to have to concentrate on tonight. Is there one particular part of this strange building that you're keen to investigate? Um, well, the, the one area that's kind of most unusual, and I'm not particularly looking forward to, but I've got a horrible feeling we'll be down there at some point, is the bolt passage. And this is the passage that goes around the whole uh, fort. And again, odd things have been experienced in there. I think we'll find people will just be very scared going in there because there's kind of one way in, one way out. And if you were not in the right frame of mind investigating that, I think some unusual things could happen. Maybe nothing paranormal, but we need to go in there with the right frame of mind. When you say right frame of mind, sometimes you find, which is quite interesting, if you are scared, and I know this is something that Louis Sava has, has talked about, if you are scared, it heightens the energy, therefore you're more likely to create the, 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 the poltergeist activity. One theory could be that by being in this right psychological state of mind, that helps the, the, the genuine phenomena to occur. The problem associated with that, of course, is it makes it very difficult to rely on people's testimony, because any slight sound or even the belief you're hearing something if you're, if you're very scared, you're going to start seeing things, hearing things that aren't there's nothing paranormal, there's no ghost there. So it may make for an interesting evening, but we've got to be very careful in trying to interpret what goes on. We may have more than just this remote retreat playing on our minds tonight, but we do intend to triumph over any hysteria that our night's work may hold. And perhaps the introduction of two mediums may help to alleviate our understandable fears. Medium David Wells and guest psychic Gordon Smith have already safely negotiated the Solent stormy waters. But what would they feel is really responsible for haunting the grim surroundings of Spitbank Fort? This place, actually, I feel, uh, is more active. Right. Um, and especially the further into it I come, there's, there's, a kind of, there's spots, or there are spots, I feel, further up here, around this, around this sort of bar area. Um, again, I, I don't actually get a, a spirit presence, again, but I can actually feel sort of psychic activity. I feel as though things have happened here. Um, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of noise that I pick up. That's the first thing. I what pick sort up noise? sounds, different sounds in my ears. Um, and it, it almost feels like a hissing noise or a, a, a whistling noise, I've got to say. But what is causing the phenomena here? What's causing the phenomena yeah. here? That I don't know at this moment because okay. I don't feel that... There's nothing that strong up here that, that can give me a clue at the okay. moment. But I feel as though as we go down, that's, that's what I'm drawn to going... OK. Uh, as, down. As going, yeah, down beneath okay. here. Although pleased that Gordon was feeling something from the fort's recent past, we had to be a little concerned that this energy appeared to manifest on a lower level, seemingly the dark and dank passageways that form the fort's ground floor. And this was a place where Spitbank's malevolence would rise to prominence. I have this voice I don't like you. Portsmouth has long been acknowledged for its crucial role in defending England's shores from foreign invasion. One mile from the city's harbour is Spitbank Fort, a 19th century construction that acted as a barrier from any hint of attack. Many men served here, but only one is known to have died on this remote man-made island. And with Gordon feeling drawn downwards, we have to follow his lead and head into the Bolt Passage, a narrow chamber that circles the entire fort. I, I just get a, a real strong sense down here. Um, this, this is where I feel a presence. I actually got a sense of somebody touching me down here. But, I mean, just in here, 
Um, uh, as the most intense, well, one of the most intense places I feel. Really? Don't know what you could do down here, but I definitely feel a presence here. I feel a male presence. Quite an eerie thing because I don't get any communication with the man. It's just as though he leans over like this and then I feel his hand on me. I, I feel somebody has had a real fright here as well. I, I, I get the sense of somebody screaming here, somebody jumping, somebody has felt a, a strong presence here. Spitbank Fort is a name that reflects this building's nature. Large, strong and almost unforgiving in its mood. And our emotions weren't exactly on a high either. But we still had more to explore, particularly as our male presence still appears to entice Gordon the further that we travel. Again, that, that, just that horrible feeling. That, imagine somebody just leaning over you. This is what it feels like. And every time I feel that, I feel sick and I feel my stomach tightening up. Um, which is not a nice feeling. No. It's just... Um, and is this presence you feel, is he here all the time? I, I feel since I've come down here, I actually feel not he's not attached to me, but I do feel this mm. constant coming and going, just as though he's overshadowing me and stepping back. So it's it's definitely there. Somebody I feel has felt this. Somebody has felt this overwhelming kind of yeah, just a horrible sense. Audible sounds play a prominent part in this building's alleged activity. But are they environmental? or actually paranormal. Personally, I felt sure that something was amiss with this location. Whilst preparing to record a piece to camera earlier in the day, I'd been shocked and scared by a hideous hissing sound right next to me. No human could have contributed to this disturbing event, but would Gordon help to explain what had happened and who our invisible host may be? It's almost like I don't want to go around here. There's some, almost like an energy saying, nope, don't go around here, this, this is, is This is exactly here. where I was standing today. And I heard, well, I won't tell you what I heard, but I stood here today and I had one hell of a fright. Just horrid feelings here. What about in this, standing in there? What? I heard somebody whispering to me there. What did they say? Really out loud. It was, what was it? It was just like saying my name. What is it? My name. Oh, is it Gordon? Uh -huh. But so, it was just right behind my head. And it was just like that, as if it was coming out in a breath. Could... I'm hearing stuff as it was down there. But I, again, I don't know how much all this is interconnected to so whether or not it's. I don't know what is down there. But no, I, this, this area of it for me is, is pretty active, I would say. There's definitely some... I'd love to find out more about this character. I really would love to try and can get I, a link to this character. Can I tell Gordon what happened to me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was, you know, just on the other side of this door mm -hmm. when he first came round, I was stood there and it was pitch black and I thought Ian was near the door behind me and I was just ready to do my piece to camera and I heard... and then this almighty bang and we tested the door, it wasn't the door, but it was a huge... Everybody else heard the bang, but I heard like a sss, and I ran, because it was so clear, mm. so audible. We weren't running it, we weren't rolling any of the cameras. Mm. But then I checked with Pauline, who works here, and she said one night she was sweeping around this area, and she heard exactly the same, same thing, thing, and she ran. Hours after my experience in the same spot, a similar sound had just stopped Gordon dead in his steps. Our editors can isolate this breath to the clip microphones that three of us were wearing. Yet as you can see, neither Gordon, Matthew nor I were moving our mouths at the moment that an unforeseen presence had clearly troubled our guest psychic. These few rooms had offered a curious array of events. Spitbank Fort is grim, so we weren't hopeful of receiving too many pleasantries. Yet Gordon's sensing of one male astral does bear witness to the one man known to have died here. But would his identity become any clearer as medium David Wells began his reading in the kitchen area? I kind of pick it up, I'm picking up on two levels. I'm, I'm starting uh, you know, to link downstairs because I know that we're 
we're going to be going down at some point. And I start. I feel a little bit of apprehension about that, if I'm being honest. Um, up here, the, the, there is just there's one thing I feel up here is a bit of impishness, a bit of playfulness. So um, movement. So either people who nudges, or, you know, like a little yeah. that, or uh, um, things moving. So maybe you know bottles clinking or um, chairs moving, that kind of thing. And the only thing, the, the, there is a spirit I'm picking up up here now. It's of a, a boy, not a tiny little boy, probably about 15, 16. Um, and it's easy to say in a fort that he's wearing a uniform, but mm -hmm. he is. Mm -hmm. And he's, the, the term they're giving me, and it's a very old, it's an old naval term, is powder monkey. So these were the boys who would... Put the power, uh, put, put in, the the power in the guns. Or, and I guess throughout history, what probably has happened, they probably still, some of them still have that name. And um, why do you think he's, he's here? Why do you think he's causing these things to happen in this area? I think he just, he's just playing, he's just being playful. I don't know if he died here, I haven't got that far yet, because why would he be here and not? Yeah. Because if he went on and grew up and died somewhere else, he wouldn't come back as a child here. Yeah. So therefore, logic dictates that he at some point lost his life here, or he's linked to someone here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So he, he would, but he's definitely. So he's linked to the building, not anyone who works here. Okay. Yeah, so. Over 150 men were once based here, expectantly waiting for the onset of an enemy attack, one that never came. But death isn't a stranger to these walls, and neither are reports of paranormal phenomena, especially in this former apartment room and with hushed tones rudely interrupted by incoherent whispers and apparitions, we let David see for himself. I expected to hear those obvious things, there's, there's props everywhere. Okay. Um, but residually, I can't even hear the, the, the battle thing. You, know, do you, know you can't what? hear you know, it, nothing. So I doubt very much if it saw any action. Really? At all. I can't, I think it would just have been the old um, drill, 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 and more drill. Right. Nothing much else. Okay. I mean, he's going he, he's gonna to definitely move things, and people are going to see his, like a shadow, you know, like a warmth across the wall or something. And it's almost like he's playing with them. Do you think he's here all the time? Do you think he's not crossed over, as it were? I think he's he's here a lot. If he's crossed over or not, I can't. I wonder if he's got like he's coming back. I know what you mean. If he's if he's coming back to play, no, because he wouldn't do that. I don't no. see any reason why he would. So he he must have for some reason attached himself to this place. I don't know whether we find that out as we go down because he could be attached to whatever or whoever. I'm sensing in other rooms. Okay, should we move on? And just before we move on, I just want to ask Richard to come in. What have you got? Well, um, A, the fact that you've said there's no action here and drill, drill, drill is absolutely right because, uh, right. I mean, th this was built to defend Portsmouth, but it was never, never under attack at all. I want to take you down the stairs now. OK. All right? You're not happy about this, no, are you? No, I'm not happy. Why? I don't know. My stomach's churning at the thought of it. With David hitting upon more of the occurrences that blight Spitbank Fort in the modern age, we moved down one level, and as it immediately transpired from an austere atmosphere into the presence of negative emotions. See, I don't like this at all. I know it's a little space and things, but my whole... Everything about me is working, do you know what I mean? My skin's crawling, my head's starting to hurt, my stomach's starting to churn. Why? Why do you think that is? Well, usually for me, it's uh, like upstairs he was quite playful, so I felt like, but for me it's a negative energy. OK, the positive ones will sometimes make me, do you know what I mean, sometimes mm. touch me so mm -hmm. I know they're there, but, but not the sickness, and the, the, it's actually feeling a bit dizzy and nauseous. That's negative energy for me. So what's creating the negative energy? Well, I'm going to tell you right now because he's on me. It's this man and he's, um, he's not particularly aggressive. So he's not like 
got his hands around my throat or any of that kind of nonsense. Yeah. What he is is blustery and a bit pissed off for want of a, of a better is this, expression. Is this different from the person? This is a man. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He's a man, not a boy. He is... He has, you know, the, that Victorian kind of look, you know, with the long sideburns, curly hair. He's making me feel... I feel like he's been blown apart. So it's like he's... What, the, the, what he's putting in my head, if I, can, if I can explain what I see in my head, he's there one minute, and then it's like... He goes... So that... He's obviously been caught in an explosion. So he... And then he's just replaying that to me all the time, just that... All the time. Henry. Henry. Henry is his name. Henry who? I can't hear what he's saying to me because he's so... I can't communicate like I can communicate with you because he's so angry. Do you know, they, he's boiling with it, with the rage. Um, Does he know, is, is he here with us now? He's around, he's around us all the time now. Do you know why he's angry? I think he's angry because they denied him. Um, they denied him for no. I think he wasn't killed in. He was killed accidentally, so he wasn't killed in battle. But it denied him, and the word he's just saying family. Oh, is it old real or old real? Something like. Surname. This is the name, is it? Old real. Old real. Old real. Old real. Old real. Old real. Yeah. Henry Alt real. Yeah. Yeah, that's the name. And my guide is telling me he will use your name. He said he will call your name. He did that with Gordon. Oh, did he? Didn't he? That's what Gordon... Gordon said he heard his, 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 his own name. name. He will call your name, and the reason he will call your name is to lull you into a false sense. So be careful. Um, I want to bring Richard in. Um, Richard, a lot of information. Mm, you got a lot of it right as well. His name was Henry. Oh, was he it? was killed here. His name was Artriel. A E W T R E A L, I believe. Um, we're not sure. I think he might have been a sergeant. I and see. He said he was an officer, but he was in sort of charge. Um, which was and we know about the way he died. We know that he was blown to pieces yeah. by a one of the cannons that misfired, and the shell came out the back and blew, blew him up. Um, you can't come up with a date for us, can you? Um, 1910. Oh, 1910, yes. So. Really? Yes. Despite his accuracy, David's forewarning wasn't quite what we wanted, particularly as we were about to cut off the generator that heats and powers this entire location. And with both mediums having already impressed Richard, I invite David and Gordon to open a seance in the kitchen area, with the name of Henry Atriel at the forefront of our minds. I'm starting to feel completely overshadowed by somebody at the moment. Yeah. And I'm feeling a huge pulse coming through me as if it's shooting into the table. There's somebody wandering about. Yeah. Please give us some sort of sign. Let us know that you're around. There are some bottles on the bar. Could you perhaps move those? There's a glass on the bar. Some bar stools. Just move them. Let us know that you're around. I know you can do it because you've done it before. What's happening, Gordon? I mean, I feel I'm really solidly there, and that's why I'm mentally saying, look, do something to the table. Oh. And I can feel oh. it for yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, good boy, come on. Can you move something on the bar? Oh. Something oh. move? Do you know Henry? Oh God, it shivers, shivers right up my spine when I said the name. I saw something flash right past you, David, at the back. Just like a black shadow just rushing right across the back there. Oh, but it's not because I said that name. Yeah. Mm. Let me say it again then. What, you mean Henry's come up here? Could have done, because I called oh, no. his name. He is actually here, my yeah. body's tingling. Oh no. He's yeah. right on me. Henry, if you are really here, uh, can you make that 
strange whistling noise that people keep hearing. Oh, Who was that? Who's... I heard that. That was, that was a whistle. It was? Oh, it was a whistle. That was a it was. Can you make that strange whistling noise that people keep hearing? Oh, Who was that? Can you make that strange whistling noise that people keep hearing? Oh, Who was that? Nearly a century on, Henry's soul may still be in turmoil at the means of his sudden demise. But is he as harmless as we were first made to believe? And if he hasn't accepted his death, then when will his confusion turn to anger? With its latest helpless inhabitants left fumbling around in total darkness, Spitbank Fort had every opportunity to prove that this truly is a haunted island. Hey, what was the properties that Most Haunted has investigated, this has to be the most unusual. Spitbank Fort is one of the four military defence forts that were built in the Solent during the 1870s. However, this location has attracted us as it's thought to be haunted. Just one death has been recorded here, that of a soldier called Henry Atriel, a man who has already appeared to have opened a dialogue with our psychics. So would a further seance entice more communication with this tragic figure? Is there anybody here? Are there any spirit people here? Did you just... Um, collect. Excuse me. No, it was down that end. It did. It was our end. I did move my weight, but let me move my weight again, see if it happens again. If anyone stays where they are. No, it was... Wasn't no, it was actually yeah, so yeah, more neither you, if it, anyway. Can you see us? Have you passed over into the lap? I feel somebody touching the leg. Okay, there's a tap there. My left leg. Again under here. I just felt a big tap then. Uh, it was like somebody's hand there. going on my left leg. Really? Mm -hmm. Henry, if this is you who's here, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could feel that actually under my oh, hands. Is there anything you can show me through David? I know. He's creaking underneath. It is. This is you who's doing this to the table, isn't it? Oh, oh God, that was a definite tap. We can, I can feel it coming up from under the table. Mm. Tapping under my feet again. I have got the weirdest, fe I have got Thank the weirdest you. feeling that some, something awful is about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get angry with us. I, I, no, I, I, table I just know. moved. That was a table moving. What, the sound like a... <sighs> no, yeah. it's all happening at the same time. Oh, outside. Don't worry. Ooh. Don't worry, it's OK. Oh. I heard this voice saying, I don't f***ing like you. It's cracking in the middle of the table. Oh, it's just cracked, cracked in the, the table, floor. yeah. But my, it's by John, by my feet. I'm sorry, but the wood... He just said, I don't like it's, you. No, I don't f***ing like you. I'm sorry, but the wood has cracked <laughs> by my feet under the table. OK, Henry, I can hear you. And you know you can make me hear you. Oh, don't worry, don't it's worry. It's the exact same, I know. OK. Oh, and my feet again. Oh, what? the floorboard is actually mm. yeah, like that's, yes. tilting up. That's what was happening to me before. So it's been happening. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's God, it's like it's breathing under my feet. Someone get a camera in that place. Can you see it? Stop always oh, messing with my chair. Tap out there again. Yeah. I'm Come on, tap out loud. Quiet taps in here. Okay. There's one just again. Yeah. What's that? Henry, please stop oh, playing. Oh. Henry, stop playing. I'm sure it's what you can do. Do we take a walk down the corridor to that place where you did the piece of the camera? Well, yeah, if you want. No. No. Why? I just got the awful sensation I was being followed and I could hear something behind me. 
there is something nasty in this corridor. When I was stood right at the end of it, I could hear something behind me. I've been hearing things out here all night. Ian's anxiety followed my unease at the constant cracking of wooden boards beneath my feet. But were we in the midst of actual paranormal phenomena or the psychology of our surroundings? And we already knew that our pursuit of supernatural activity must continue in the worst kind of conditions. Passage number seven wasn't initially too uncomfortable for either David, Gordon, Richard, John or myself, although the same can't be said for Stuart, Matthew, Rachel or Joe, who were suffering a soaking down in the bolt passage. Turn the light off, the lights off for a minute and let's see how dark it is. All torches off? Yeah. Well, wow. I'm just going to turn yeah, it round here. That's disgusting. That's gross. That is black. Well, there's actually planks now, so you can walk on the planks. <gasps> hey, what was the f what was that? You are joking. What was that then? You're joking. Did, did you hear that? I heard yes. it. Are you sure it's not somebody down there? No, there's no one down here. I can see on my camera now, there's nothing here. Hey, what was the f was that? You are joking. Hey, what was the f was that? You are joking. Whoa. Hello? Is there anyone down here? Just hold on, hold on. See, all these lights are off. There's no one here. Henry, if you're here, can you show yourself? Yeah, so just oh, breathe as deep as you can. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah, so just breathe as deep as you can. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah, so just breathe as deep as you can. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Two taps. And if that was you tapping, could you tap again? That's really it. That sends you something that's funny. Just the fact I can hear your, your, your voice clearly in this direction. And you're stood that way. Well, it's, it's, it's going it's, it's to whack around, isn't it? It's a pure acoustic effect, but it mm. it's really it eerie. It actually yeah. makes me shiver. Yeah. Because I'm hearing the voice coming from the darkness down here. It's your voice, basically. Did you say I just, Yeah, I just keep hearing noises. It's like a bang, oh, wasn't it? Yes, it must be. It isn't, no, no, it was a bang. It was almost like a door being well, closed, well, wasn't I'm it? I'm hearing noises. You can hear it, yeah. Uh, it's probably us. Well, there's no one else down here. I'm obviously going to say it's probably us generating the noise. You okay, David? Yeah, he's doing it. Yeah, I can see your face changing. I can actually see, like, a beard and moustache forming. Okay. Henry's issue. If it is, build up another bit more. Oh my God, I'm seeing this horrible face. Is it? Yeah. Really dark, hollow eyes. I mean, I know he's got eyes, but it actually looks the way I'm seeing it like he didn't. So me either. Yeah. I mean, I know he's got eyes, but it actually looks the way I'm seeing it like he didn't. So me either. Yeah. I mean, I know he's got eyes, but it actually looks the way I'm seeing it like he didn't. It's me, isn't it? Yeah. I can't breathe. I'm struggling to breathe down here. I'm getting dizzy in here. Yeah, I am as well. It's because we're going round in a circle. Sorry, Jim. Squeezy. Okay? Yeah. That's so freaky, that. You feel his anger? Yeah, anger. Because that's what's coming off you, just pure anger. Yeah. What was your anger? Come on, friend. Impress David's mind. Why were you so angry? Was it how you died? I think you say it's idiots, because it was someone else's fault. Was he Just killed? Idiots. Or was it an accident? It was an accident, but it was preventable. Get this off me. Come on, take that way. How is your face? <sighs> it's all right. Now I can start to move my mouth a bit, but this whole side of my that face was, was dropped. It was really distorted, Lou. Mm. Have we 
we just encountered Henry Atriel. Is he responsible for the whistles and the heavy, almost sinister size? And was he also affecting David? Our final hours alone in the Solent would prove to be increasingly more frightful. One mile off the coast of Portsmouth is Spit Bank Fort, a mid-19th century construction that protected one of England's crucial maritime routes from enemy attack. Yet despite its cold, callous demeanour and hostile intent, the only soldier to die here was the unfortunate victim of an accidental explosion in 1910. But if Henry Atriel does haunt here, then are we alone with a man who welcomes our attempts at communication? Whilst Gordon, Matthew and Ian head along passage number seven, Carl and Stuart decide to scramble into the lamp passage, a tiny and terrifying four foot high ceiling cavity that no one else wants to face. Basically, we're going down a, um, a place that lots of kind of noises have been heard, okay. but none of the crew will come down it on that. Stuart and I, the only two, two, that's Stuart. Me and Carl again. It's good to have the team back together. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We've been apart for too long. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, here we are. Really lost it. Still affecting me feel. That was a fair gust of wind, wasn't it? Yeah. Feeling your house still even. That's what I think it means. You think this is a drafted place? Yeah, obviously, because these doors are all open. Yeah. So windy, it's just everything that comes through, isn't it? Where are you going? <laughs> He's buggered off and left me, and I can't keep up with him. He's got the torch. <laughs> I think it's in this hammock room or something, no worthy. Or a shell storage, I don't know. Something. Oh, yeah, this is creepy. Oh, God, there's a draft there. Hmm? Draft there. Really strong draft. Oh. Yes, this? We're, we're in the same corridor again, mate. Have we? Yeah, we've oh, just, we just, we just gone round. If you go around there, sure? if you go about a couple of doors down, you'll... That's the door we just gone through. Yes, we will then we hear Carl and the shirt. So we come back the same way we come in. Yeah. yeah so how can we get a weave in? How can we get to the list? Go to the very end of this, and then we'll go out and get the door, don't we? Oh, what was that? What was that? How was that? Yeah, so how can we get a weave in? How can we get to the list? Go to the very end of this, and then we'll go out and get the door, don't we? Oh, what was that? What was that? How was that? Yeah, how can we get a weave in? How can we get to the other side? Go to the very end of this, and then we'll go out and get another door, is that right? Oh, was that? What was that? Jesus. That was, that was quite a big worm, wasn't it? Yeah. That wasn't something here, though. No. It wasn't that far back. It wasn't there, was it? You said this stupid thing <coughs> to go down the end. You're all right, I bless you. Yeah, so it's just a bit dusty down there, that's all. It's kind of deserves just to run right down there until it finishes it. That's fine. Is it finished there, yeah? yeah. Oh, shit. 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 What the f That is on our level. Oh, shit. shit. Oh, shit. shit. Is there anyone down here with us? You know there's not. So far, she's just not nice. How do you feel, Stu? Really scared. Very, very scared at the moment. And I really do mean that. I mean, if I stay silent for a couple of seconds, you can hear that. That's the wind howling outside. The weather is... The, basically, the weather's atrocious outside. And uh, I'm getting more and more scared. Move the floorboards, do something for us. Oh, shit. 
Jesus. Oh. I saw somebody look through that. Is that hole? Yeah. What did it look like? It was too quick. It was just like somebody going, whoa. Bad, isn't it, eh? I don't know, just... Terrible. Oh, oh. shit. That was tough. I thought that was in front of us. No. No, that was in front of me. No. It was. I, I thought it came from down, no, down there. Definitely. I mean, we are right at the front door here, but I actually hope that is here. Is anyone down here with us? I thought there's loads of orbs there, but it's not just dust. Is anyone down here with us? My head is right down there. I thought I came here. Yeah, I did. What was that? Was that like a bulb it's or something? Like something falling down yeah. the end, isn't it? It was like a bit on wood, that wasn't it? Yeah. What was that? Third back there. What was that? Third back there. Could anyone have thrown that in, here, Stu? Hey. It's not going to throw in there. Well, I'm just saying, could anyone have made those sounds? Yeah. What's in there? You've got outlets everywhere. There's no one there. I'm going out. I can't stand this anymore, Stu. We're getting out, yeah. That's all right, I'll just... I don't feel too good, I feel like a shit. Both of these vigils have encountered similar sounds, and with Gordon seeing a face moments before these groups both heard the sound of something smashing, can we therefore link the incidents that left both sets of investigators feeling far from happy with life in total darkness? Appearances can sometimes be deceptive, and having finally returned to terra firma, we're still a little perplexed by Spitbank Fort's contrasting moods. Yes, it does appear a little unsightly, an emotion that hardly changes once you step inside. But if you can cast aside the psychology offered by its open and empty floors, then a tangible impression of its previously regimented role can be attained. And with just the one recorded ghost, we were offered a glimpse at the phenomena that others have previously seen and heard here. The heavy moans, groans and poltergeist activity that we captured in sound seem to show that Henry Atrial's mood typifies a man who lost his life in a sudden and shocking way, all of which supplied us with a series of events that require further scrutiny. Terrible. Oh, shit. shit. A number of unusual things did happen as part of the investigation. Um, firstly, I was quite surprised by the fact that David seemed to come out with information which was actually quite specific. Um, he came out with names and dates, which is unlike David, actually. He doesn't usually get that very specific, specific information. Um, so that's kind of unusual uh, in that respect. And again, the sceptical uh, explanation could be that we, can we be sure that there's no normal way in which you could have got information about that location? If we really can rule that out, then that could be quite strong evidence of some kind of genuine mediumistic ability. Quite separate events included um, some of the noises, uh, bangs, as though old objects were moving around uh, on their own, of course, and if that was genuine, that would be described as poltergeist phenomena. But another... I don't know, I just... Terrible. <laughs> But again, I don't think we can confidently rule out some of the normal explanations. It's a very, very old building, so bits of the, the building, bits of the ceiling are going to fall down on their own, and at that time in the morning, we're going to maybe think, or some members of the crew may think it's ghosts. Um, particularly impressed by myself was the experiences that I had with uh, Ian and with Gordon. Yeah, how can we get a weaving? Can we get to the very end of this? Go out and get another door, is that right? Who was that? What was that? How was that? We heard some very unusual sounds, which again, 
it was, weren't easy to explain, but also we found ourselves quite disorientated much of the time. You weren't always quite sure where you were. So you're walking one direction, and there were noises behind, turn around and noise in a different directions. So again, it's not easy to know uh, exactly what was causing those bangs. What was that? During one part of the investigation, um, pretty much all members of the crew were in uh, one of the kind of cellar areas and we did uh, a fairly long seance. What I like is the fact that the group is very keen to try these different types of experiments and what I think is very important is when they're doing it is not to analyse it too much because there's obviously time after, like now, to analyse, think back and try and think of normal explanations. Spitbank Fort may have been built to protect the innocent, but it's the burden of a tragic loss that still hangs heavy in its air. And should you choose to visit here, make sure you escape before the lights go out. Sleep tight.